All right, guys, we're getting ready to do something I despise, and that's going to the landfill, but the dump trailer is full. We got the storm cleanup debris in the dump trailer. I got some metal fencing in there, just all kinds of junk. It needs to be emptied out because any day now, I'll get a call about some nice logs, and if the dump trailer's full of that stuff, I'm pretty much up the creek without a paddle. So let's head up to the landfill and try not to get a flat tire and get that stuff dumped out of there then get back up to the sawmill because I have a pretty interesting log to put on there today. Before we get going, I gotta move the 574 because somebody parked it right in front of the dump trailer. Since I'm the only person around here that drives the tractors, that narrows it down a bit. We've got the hatefulest cat on YouTube with us today. Hello, mama. Friends, right there is the log we're going to be sawing up today. But before we get started, I need to finish up this wide oak, doing five quarter on this one. friends we got some fresh coffee a new log on the mill but what did you guys think about that white oak there's nothing better other than walnut than white oak in my opinion walnut's my favorite thing to saw but white oak is number two and those medullary rays on those last few boards guys were spectacular i'll be saving those for my own projects here in the probably maybe uh, late summer i'll air dry these for a few months and we'll put them in the kiln and maybe by first of summer midsummer Depends on the moisture content, those will be ready. Probably midsummer, midsummer if I had to guess. On the sawmill, guys, we got a hard maple, and this is going to be a good one. It's been on the ground for three years. Three years. I bought this from a sawmill last year with some other maple that he had, and he told me it had been on the ground at his sawmill for two years, and it's been over a year, or so three years. And guys, judging by what I'm seeing here, 
The bark is gone, the outer layer on the end grain, what I'm looking at, it looks like we're gonna have a ton of spalting on this log. If it turns out that the spalting is really good, we're gonna do eight quarter. If I open this log up and I'm wrong about it and the spalting's not really as noticeable, we'll do five quarter boards. But I think we're gonna be in good shape. Usually a log, to really spalt really good, it's usually in, in my experiences, it's different for everybody in the region they live in, usually three to four years is a good spot for a lot of spalting to happen on your log. This will be in three years and being a smaller log, it has a better chance to spalt more because there's less material to, uh, to spalt, if that made sense to you. A bigger log takes longer, smaller logs don't take as long. We got a little bit of taper in this log. I'll probably use the tow boards on the operator's side. I'll raise it up about four inches, get that pith lined up for the first cut. And this right here, friends, may be a jaw dropper. I tell you what, I got a good feeling about this log. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, friends, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. So let's open this one up, guys, and see how she looks. I got a real good feeling about this one. If this log is a total disaster and it's not spalted, I'll edit this stuff out and you guys will never hear me brag about it. That way you won't think I'm wrong about this log. Cause YouTubers are never wrong. You know how that goes, we're never wrong. Says no one. But two more things here, we'll get started. Number one, thanks to everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel, I really appreciate it. If you're interested in Patreon, there's a link down below. You get to see the videos 24 hours before they go on YouTube without any ads. And I also put in the description on Patreon with the video how much these logs are costing me. So if you're interested in that and supporting us here in the channel, you can do like a dollar a month. It's really cheap, it's not expensive. There's a link down below. And number two, I will have some more lumber on my website probably around the middle of February. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully some more sassafras. That stuff sold out really fast. I really appreciate everybody that bought some. Thank you guys a lot. my measuring tape to point. Now once I get through the log and I get rid of the pith and I start working through the other half of the log, I flip it over. And the reason being, down here is the bark side of the tree that's laying on the sawmill bed and it gets more narrow the more cuts you take. And when you start doing that, you start losing clamping area, especially on this back side over here, and it starts to push the top of the log over here on the sawmill track, and sometimes it will actually hit your saw head as it comes down through here. 
So once I get to this point and the pith is gone, I flip this over, put this face on the bed and that gives me, you know, this is 17 inches wide. It gives me more area to clamp and it also puts the narrow end or the narrow side of the log right here in the middle and not over here on the side. So it's a lot safer and it makes it a whole lot easier. So once you get past the pith, try that the next time you're live edge slabbing a log and flip it over, it will be a whole lot easier to clamp. So judging by our thickness here that we have left, we'll probably get three more eight quarter slabs out of this log and they're looking pretty good. There's a lot of ambrosia in here. I didn't expect to see that today. A lot of ambrosia. Right here, we're looking at almost 17 inches wide at some points. That one right there is 17 and a half. When I say ambrosia, if you're not familiar with that, there's an ambrosia beetle. And when it gets inside of a maple tree, it makes these little tracks that kind of uh, have a reaction with the wood grain. And you can see their tracks where they travel. And that color discoloration, if that sounds right, is what people call wormy maple or ambrosia maple. So the ambrosia beetle causes that. And that same ambrosia beetle would get into a bot's elder. And that's what causes the red streets in bot's elder. So uh, you learned something today. Stick around for more. You never know what I'm gonna talk about on this channel. So let's flip this one over guys, get three more slabs. And even though this is a light colored wood, we'll throw some water on it. Make some of you people happy that's been complaining about the lack of water on slabs on this channel here lately. So let's get back to it and finish this one up. 